Hey folks, in this video we're going to be discussing math operations using Google Sheets query statement. In my opinion, query is the most powerful function in Google Sheets. It will empower you to analyze, explore, and visualize data in a way that I don't think any other function uh, allows. Um, so I encourage everybody to use this. It is a very robust function, uh, which provides you a, a whole set of things that you can do with it. We're going to be focusing on using the math operations within the select statement using um, a data set that we have that uh, includes in, uh, information about uh, country names, people names, month of the year, and then three values relative to all of those things. So in our example, we are going to use all of the math operations at the bottom of the screen in order to demonstrate how you could potentially use uh, Google Sheets query in your projects. So we are gonna begin by using the query function. Query has two required arguments and a third optional argument. The first argument is identifying your data range, which in this case will be sheet one. We are going to select all columns in sheet one and we are gonna move into our second argument using that comma. And you'll note in the documentation that your query statement needs to be enclosed in double quotes. So we are going to add a double quote, and then I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut of command and enter in order to put a line break into my uh, formula. I'm on a Mac, I don't know what the Windows keyboard shortcut is for line breaks, uh, but you don't, you don't need to use a line break. This is a stylistic preference of mine. I prioritize readability, and I found that when I put each individual component of my query statement on its own line, that it's easier for me to read and for me to debug. So as you advance forward, I would encourage you to consider readability when you start writing logic, whether it is in Google Sheets or some other uh, business intelligence software. I am going to begin my query statement with select, and I want to return some results about the countries in my data set. So I am going to select column A, and then I want to know how many instances of the country names appear in the data set. So I'm going to use count and then I'm gonna open a parentheses and I'm gonna reference column A so that I will get an individual count of every single time that each country appears. Additionally, I want to get the total of value one. So I'm going to use sum in order to get the total of column D. Additionally, I wanna know the average amount of every, col or of every value in column D. So I'm going to use AVG in order to get the value. I'm gonna use command enter to add another line. And then I'm gonna use where. The where condition is not required as part of query. You'll note in the documentation that there is no where statement there. I like to use where as a way to exclude blank values. So in column A, I want to return results as long as there are some values in the cells. So I exclude null values by stating where A is not null. Finally, I need to enter in a group by statement in order to tell query what I wanna run these aggregations against. Anytime that you use an aggregation in query, you need to tell query what you want to group by. In this case, we want to group by A because we want to get results that aggregate values against the country name. This is the minimum amount of information that we need to enter in order to get a result. So I'm going to close my query statement by using a double quote, right? Just like our documentation has the entirety of the query statement enclosed in double quotes. I'm gonna use a comma to move to my final optional argument where I get to decide how many headers I want. I want my header row to appear, so I'm gonna enter a number one 
and then I can hit enter and Google Sheets will conclude the statement for me and add an extra parentheses. And now you'll see that we are getting a set of results that are listed in alphabetical order based upon the country name. And we see that there are 480 instances of Canada, uh, that it has nearly 25,000 total of value one, and that the average uh, line item for value one is 52. And we can double check that by uh, dividing the total by the amount, and you can see we get 52, which is a pretty good indication that our query has successfully run. I'd like to demonstrate uh, what this looks like if we didn't put where in there. As I said, we, we don't need that, but if we, if we did not include that, then we would get this blank row here, which isn't something that we wanna see. The reason that we're seeing that is because if we go to the bottom of our data, there are two blank rows in here that are returning because we're referencing the entire range. Um, you know, you could go in there and delete those two rows. I would not recommend doing that because then you're adding manual actions to a potential workflow that you're constructing. It's far more efficient to say where A is not null. Cool. So what I'm gonna do now is introduce another optional statement that you can make in here, right? So you can see that this is like the bare minimum if we just wanted to start getting some results that allow us to explore and analyze our data. Um, but right now we're ordering by alphabetical order of the country names. You might wanna order by the total count of countries or by the sum total of value one or the average amount of value one. So you have the ability to do that in Google Sheets query where uh, after group by you could enter order by and then, um, for example, let's, let's start by ordering by A. Nothing's going to change because it was already defaulting to ordering by A. What you could do is you could order by descending values, which will then result in United States being first, followed by United Kingdom, followed by Canada. Additionally, we could order by count A descending, and then we would get the highest amount of count. We could also remove descending, and then we would get an ascending uh, list based upon count. So the way that order by works is that you have two options. You can just order by whatever, right? So you could do A or count B or sum D or average D. And if you enter order by in one of those columns, you will order by ascending. If you wanna order by, um, descending, you have to write in DESC. You can also, if you wanted to, write in ASC, but it's a bit redundant because it already defaults to ascending order. Um, cool, so another thing that we have the ability to do within the query statement itself is to label. So if we wanted AVG value one to actually appear as average value, we could copy average D, paste that in there and write average amount. And then you'll see that'll change. If you wanted to add in other things to label, you have to separate it by a comma. And then you could go in here and type in total amount. And then you'll see you can add that in there. Cool. So now what we'll talk about is um, the other math operations that you could do around like addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. So I'm gonna clear out um, my order by, my label, all that type of stuff so that we have a, a cleaner data set in here. And I'm going to enter in just our count, right? So that we have, it's just an easy way of seeing how this works. Um, so what you could do is you could go into C like this and you could do um, 480 plus two, right? And then you could auto fill it down like this. But the problem with something like this is that then you have functions in three separate cells, right? And what happens if you wanted to go in here and let's say that you wanted to add back in sum of value one, you're gonna get an error because you have to write over these cells. 
So then you have to delete these and then add it back in of doing 480 plus two. And you might want this to appear within your data set, right? And you have a problem because then you can't write it over and blah, 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 blah. What you can do instead is you could do, um, so let's remove some D, right? And then you could just enter in count A plus two. And check it out. You have it going on in there. You also have the ability to do um, count a minus two, right? You could do count a times two, right? Then you get this doubled amount over here. Or you could do uh, count a divided by two. And the cool thing about this is now, if you need to make any adjustments to this, like adding in some column D, you now have the ability to do that. And you could also do it in a way where you could move it around just like this. Oops, sorry. That happened because I was missing a comma, right? So you can see each of the select statements need to be separated by a comma and here, we just had some D space count a minus two, and we received an error message. And as we've, as we've talked about, there are some times where your, your error messages in query are gonna be very verbose and are not going to explicitly tell you what the problem is. Your best bet when this happens is to go back in and try and read what you wrote which is why I prefer to have lines like this, separate lines like this, so that I can explore where I could have a potential issue, right? So my eye goes here and I'm like, okay, there's nothing wrong here. Group by A looks fine. We have A, we have count. Where A is not null, that's fine. And then my eye can very quickly go here and say, okay, I'm missing a comma, enter it in. And then boom, you can see we've moved the sum column all over the place. If we want to, we can order by any of these things. So let's order by count A plus two. And now you can see we're ordering by that uh, in ascending value, right? Uh, we could also do it in descending value. Boom, then that goes just a lot of power here. I hope you found this resource to be helpful. Um, it's just a small sliver of what I think Google Sheets Query could provide to you and, and your potential projects. Um, I'll have other videos that dive deeper into other aspects of query, such as figuring out how to work with dates. Um, and uh, I also have a video about how to develop dashboards using query. So I hope you'll check those things out. Uh, I'm always interested in feedback. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think there's any one right way to do things. And um, I learn based upon other people's preferences. So please use the comment section to, you know, add suggestions or feedback or anything. And uh, yeah, I hope you found this helpful.